Welcome to Gold Coast Insider, where we bring you business insights, stories, opportunities, and forecasts from movers and shakers across the Gold Coast. I'm your host, Estelle Rodigiro. I'm CEO of Regional Development Australia Gold Coast. There is a saying, if you want a job done, ask a busy person. So my next guest today is Ariana Margots. Now, Ariana is the Chief Operating Officer of Co-Spaces. She's President of the Southport Chamber of Commerce, being the first female president in the chamber in its 110-year history. She's co-director of Startup Grind Gold Coast, a mentor for the Global Shapers Gold Coast Hub and initiative of the World Economic Forum, and more importantly, a new mum to a gorgeous baby boy. Welcome today, Ariana. Thanks, Stel. Thanks so much for having me. Look, I'm almost tired listening to this. I mean, this is I'm, you, you do an amazing amount of jobs. Um, and you give back so much to the Gold Coast. So it's really good to, to be chatting to you today. I'm going to start at the beginning. And the beginning is your um, study that you undertook here at Griffith University. So you undertook your Bachelor of Communications. You majored in Digital Marketing and Public Relations. And you received the Vice Chancellor's Award for Academic Excellence. Why, why Griffith University? What brought you here to, to study? So I grew up in New South Wales and I moved to the Gold Coast as soon as I finished school. Uh, and I was really attracted to the Gold Coast just for lifestyle, to be honest. And I had a, a whole bunch of my student friends that were coming here as well. So we had such a fantastic university experience on the Gold Coast. And I always recommend it to people when I, you know, when I talk about studying. Uh, after university, I finished when I was 20, mm -hmm. so fairly early. And I was really lucky enough to do an internship with Swell Sculpture Festival. So most Gold Coasters would know Swell as that beautiful outdoor, outdoor gallery uh, festival in Corumban that happens every year. Absolutely. Yeah. I did an internship with them. I fell in love with the commercialization piece of events and marketing. Uh, and I was lucky enough to kind of get a string of jobs off the back of that opportunity and and stayed on the Gold Coast and, and I'm still here today. Oh, I don't blame you. I think all of us came for the, the sun, the surf and everything else that goes with it. So um, I'm going to jump forward. I'm going to take this from, the, from now backwards. And the first thing I want to talk to you about is your Chief Operating Officer for Co-Spaces and which, uh, and of course, you oversee Cohort, which is in the Southport Health and Knowledge Precinct. A lot of people have heard of Cohort and Co-Spaces. Do you want to put, um, do you want to talk us through what you do, how you do do it, and what, what does, you know, what are you known for there? Yes, absolutely. So, I'm Chief Operating Officer at CoSpaces, as you said, and I've been there since 2017. So we have a fantastic team now across Gold Coast and Brisbane. And essentially what we do is design and manage spaces and programs for startups and small businesses. But we really specialize in innovation spaces and entrepreneurship programs in the emerging sectors. So a key example of that, uh, as you mentioned, is cohort innovation space. Now, cohort is one of Australia's leading innovation spaces with about 300 members, it goes across three buildings. It's about three and a half square, thousand square metres. Um, as part of that, we've got an academic incubator, a digital transformation lab. We've got science labs for emerging biotech entrepreneurs. And it's also home to Lumina X, which is Australia's top accelerator for early stage startups that are focused in health tech and med tech sectors. So our program director, Dren, and CEO, Ben Howe, they have worked really hard for years to design and develop entrepreneurship programs that provide comprehensive support to startups at the start of their journey. Um, you know, and as a team, we've secured an industry attraction, education, capital partners, all of those things to help deliver this goal of strengthening our regional capability in the emerging sectors. So that's what CoSpaces does, I guess, everything from... Um, designing and delivering the space to the programs and communities that sit within it. And the training and, and being situated, I guess, out at the Gold Coast Health and Knowledge Precinct also gives you access to, to the professional knowledge that you can tap into. Does it work like that? 
That's exactly right. So I guess our our unique uh, advantage that we have out there is that the Gold Coast Health and Knowledge Precinct has this $5 billion of investment um, through infrastructure and programs. So we can really tap into that. The partners out there that like, you know, the universities and the hospitals, we have this world leading pool of experts that can help support these programs and give back to startups and small businesses and really help them to grow. So that is definitely one of our unique advantages that we have being located on the Gold Coast. Okay, so you mentioned um, key um, emerging sectors. Do you want to do you want to tell us what you see or what, what you are seeing as our key um, emerging sectors on the Gold Coast? Absolutely. So, we have a, a focus on health tech, med tech, biotech, sports tech. So really that overall health and wellness sector that's been disrupted by the likes of artificial intelligence and uh, you know digital transformation in general. That's where I believe the Gold Coast can strive. And I do strongly believe that the goal, like we're building the Gold Coast industry, um, you to be really known as the health tech leader in Australia. Mm. That um, so what makes the case bases unique here? Is it is it because where it's positioned? Is it the access to to the intelligence, the training? What makes it unique? Well. So Coast Spaces, we manage a range of different projects. Cohort Innovation Space is just one of them. Um, but I think what makes Coast Spaces unique as a company is that our team, you know, we really cover a, a wide range of deliverables. So we could have everything from facilities management to project management, innovation program design, marketing, PR. We're kind of a full package agency that's everything from like a real estate agency to entrepreneurship training. So bundle that all together. It's quite unique in what we deliver. Um, and I think that's why spaces like cohort innovation space work so well, because we do everything from the branding, the marketing, we have the tenants that come in, we manage all of that community side of things. And we have the additional entrepreneurship programs that sit on top of that. So Ariana, talk me through, walk me through this process. I'm absolutely brilliant. And I've decided that I've just I don't know, developed um, a an app, right? Yeah. And it's it's a medical app and I think it's going to be brilliant and I'm in the the, the throes of this development. I've worked you know, 12 months on it. Um, do I then come to you? Is is it is that how it works? And then and then from there, what happens to me? What 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 can happen? What's my journey, I should yeah. say? Yeah, well, if that was the case, Stel, you would be the perfect candidate to apply for the Luminar X Accelerator. Uh, yeah. And we're in our third year now of that program, and we've really cemented the reputation as Australia's leading early stage program for health and medical startups. So this is a national program where anyone can apply from across Australia. This year, we had 75 applications from companies just like you, um, and we take 10 each year. So it's quite a competitive program now. But basically, if you're successful, we take 10 startups through and we have a focus on providing comprehensive support to them and taking them through a 14-week immersive education program that accelerates their growth and really fast tracks connection and customers. So this year, we've got partners like Namada, Griffith University, you know, we're really trying to provide startups access to commercial pathways, clinical trials, funding opportunities, all of those things that they need to succeed. Oh, that's, that, that, that'd be fantastic. I have to, I have to put my hat on and try and figure something. <laughs> um, but the Queensland AI Hub too, can we talk a little bit about that? Because that's inclusive in that, um, in the case basis, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So Co-Spaces, we manage the Queensland AI Hub, and that was an initiative with the state government and industry back in 2019. So, um, you know, they collaborated together and said, we're going to deliver an artificial intelligence hub. And at the time, it was the first technology hub of its kind in Australia. So, you know, the Queensland really were leading the charge in that space and recognising that AI would be transformative across all industries. Um, and we manage that hub now, but it's kind of a similar concept to cohort in the sense that we, our team designs and delivers programs that 
really are trying to increase Queenslanders' AI literacy and global competitiveness. So, for instance, we have regional programs that we roll out in Toowoomba, Mackay, Cairns and Bundaberg. We have accelerator programs that Dren and the team have delivered um, that focus on improving startups that have an artificial intelligence slant. And then we also work with government, government and industry about, you know, the risks associated and the ethics frameworks around artificial intelligence and how that's going to affect different industry sectors. So a lot of different things going on, but I think the key thing is that everything that we do focuses on supporting startups and SMEs. So whether that's AI or health tech or, you know, any any other emerging industry, the goal is to grow Queensland's economy through supporting SMEs and startups. Mm. And I think there's been a lot of, there's so much talk about AI now, isn't there? I mean, yeah, it's so hot right now. It makes our job very easy. There's a lot of interest. So we get, for instance, last night we had an event in Brisbane. We had 250 people register. We had to cut off registration. So um, there's, it's definitely a hot topic right now, but a lot of people out there that are wanting to learn how they can benefit and how they can integrate AI into their businesses. And that's what we're here to help with. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and so it's a space which is, uh, as you say, a growing space, hot topic, and um, and businesses need to understand the value proposition to their business to get that leverage and to, to perhaps stay in the game for some yeah. businesses as well. Yeah. So now let's talk about, and congratulations, being the first female president for 110-year history of the Southport Chamber of Commerce. So let's talk about the Southport Chamber of Commerce. So you, how many do you have on your, your uh, membership? Yep. So we have a membership base of about 350 businesses now. Wow, so that's grown. Has that, has that changed and grown? Actually, a question I do want to ask is mm-hmm. has Chambers um, focus changed since COVID, through that COVID, and what's happened post-COVID? Has it changed? Has it developed? Mm. That's an interesting one, um, Stell. I think, look, in our case, Southport, it's the oldest and longest standing chamber on the Gold Coast. So we've been around for a while. Um, And back in 1912, when they wrote the constitution, it was all about um, you know, supporting businesses and the notion that by ensuring a strong business environment, the community as a whole will prosper and develop. And that's a vision that I'm really proud to still stand by today um, as as president in that position. And since COVID, we did see a shift in, obviously, you know, you've got event attendees, but one of the key strategies that we implemented was we dropped our membership fee. Now, that's really rare for chambers across Queensland. Most chambers have a membership base. That's how they make funds. That's how they continue as an organisation. Now, as a board, we kind of came together and said, what's an innovative strategy that we can do to grow our membership base, still provide value to our members, and still ensure that we are profitable uh, and sustainable as a chamber? And where we got to was to deliver free membership, Mm -hmm. grow our membership base. We now have over 350 members in Southport, which is awesome. Um, We create really high-value events where we charge a ticket fee, we get a sponsor. Our corporate members pretty much cover the run costs of our chamber for the year um, in full transparency. And we're allowed to, and it basically affords us the opportunity to provide this free membership to businesses so they don't have to come up with, you know, three, four, five hundred dollars every year as a small business just to be part of our community. So that's something that we changed during COVID that we will, that we've implemented uh, over the last three years. And I definitely believe that's been successful in terms of growing our membership base and growing our community. Mm. Look, from my perspective too, I, I saw the, the massive value proposition of the Chambers in gaining feedback through COVID about what was actually happening on the ground for your, you know, for, for people who, um, the businesses within your your Chamber, and that was invaluable in giving feedback to government on exactly how things were rolling out and what needed to be attended to. So it, it was such a good leverage. It was such a good connection. 
at a yes. time when we needed it. So I think the other thing I noticed was that you rolled out um, some surveys as well, which gave some really good insight into exactly what was happening, not just local, but a global, a local insight with mm-hmm. a, a nationwide overview, which I thought was really interesting as well. Yeah, so part of that role as the president, um, you know, I sit on the City Heart Task Force with you. So that's an opportunity for us to provide uh, information directly to the federal government, as you said. So um, that's really giving a voice to local businesses. Uh, And we also sit on the CCIQ Regional Policy Committee and Queensland Chamber Advisory Group. So all of those things, you know, it's basically just about feeding that information from the ground floor up to state and federal government and making sure that businesses' voices are heard at the table. So talking about that, can we delve in a little bit and let's, let's um, what are the businesses saying to you now? So can I have a look at some of the, can we talk through some of the challenges perhaps that, that businesses are finding at the moment um, within that Southport, within your chamber? So what we're hearing from local businesses is that business confidence is still a little shaky. Yeah. So that hasn't come back from COVID, you know, like we would have liked it to see. Business, you know, buying power is off. So people are buying more. People are, you know, spending money still somehow. I don't know, work that one out. But um, basically profits are getting squeezed because expenses are going up. So rents, you know, insurances, wages, all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, people are overworked, (laughs) understaffed with smaller profit margins. So it is it is tricky, but you know, Gold Coast businesses are resilient and and I think we will, you know, we will come off the other side. We will come out of the other side, but it is a tough, yeah, it's a tough economy at the moment to do business as a small business. It is a tough economy no matter where you are, I think, in Australia. But um there's always been talk about revitalization of the Southport precinct. Mm-hmm. Um, is that still a hot topic? And is if it is, is there anything that is potentially can be done and is being done about that? Mm. Look, I think we do need to, one of the key things, and, you know, I'll say it again, but it's, you know, it's not my idea. It's been said for, for mm-hmm. tens of years is that moving the council chambers to the CBD would just be a game changer. You know, it really would attract a new workforce to the CBD. It would attract new investment. It would have a flow-on effect with our cafes and our nighttime economy. You know, that is a key piece of the puzzle that we're missing. And it's something that the Chamber has supported, you know, long before when I was president. Um, But we'll continue to try and push for that outcome because I do think that would be such a transformational thing for our CBD. And it's and it's really needed. So um, I don't think it's probably going to happen in my time as president, um, but it's definitely something that would be a game changer. Yeah. So being the voice of, or the, the chamber, I should say, being the voice of the businesses, what do you want heard loudest for the for the businesses? What What is it that they would like us to all listen to and and try and acknowledge and see if we can do something about. Look at a state level, I think the red tape is is still a tricky one. Um, we hear this from <laughs> we hear this, um, you know, from local businesses that you know tender processes and things like that is are still really hard to get off the ground. Um, payroll tax, I'll throw that one out there. <laughs> a lot of small businesses are not a fan of payroll tax, obviously. So I hear that one a lot. Um, and just, you know, in general, keeping up with different IR changes, right? It's it's tricky for a small business. I think we'll see uh we'll see some changes around uh sustainability happen this year and what that means to be a small business and you know make sure that you've got all of your ducks in a row in terms of your sustainable practices and how that will affect being a government customer people are a bit nervous about that to be honest because they you know they they're small they don't have the cash flow they think it's something that's going to be very very expensive to them to add to the list of other expenses that they've got so I am hearing, you know, that people are a little bit nervous about that, but we'll learn more, I guess, as as that comes out from the state. And you are right. I mean, even if they want to tender now, they have to, you know, 
they have to have these sustainable practices embedded in their companies and businesses. So it is something that's just going to grow in impact. And um, so I guess it's something we need to revisit somewhere along the line and get some clarity around. Um, so, okay, so we've done those. What do you think are the opportunities moving forward, I guess, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. particularly for Southport because that's yeah. where you're situated? Yeah. Look, I think... Credit where credit's due. I think the city of Gold Coast did get it right in their economic strategy when they put a key focus on diversifying our economy. And there was a lot in there about, you know, powering the city through talent and innovation. And I think that just hits the nail on the head. So you would have heard me say it a thousand times, but the work that we do is really about elevating that Gold Coast reputation as a de destination for high growth startups. And we're trying to create more knowledge based jobs in the city. That is really what's going to attract and retain great talent here. So I think that is, you know, it's a great opportunity that we have to diversify the economy away from those traditional industries that we're strong in, like education and tourism, and focus on creating new commercial clusters in exciting industries like health tech and sports tech, like I've mentioned, you know, where technology and AI are having a great impact. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and um, it's it's mind-boggling to see what's happened in um, in our med tech industry now. It's it's just phenomenal. I think Chris, I, I interviewed Chris, uh, Dr. Chris Davis, and he said ten years ago there was just like a little tiny building, and now like, <laughs> it's gone. We've got hundreds there, and we have so many high caliber, you know, international people that come here now to to practice and study. Um, yeah. One of the things I was going to quickly chat to you about, um, and I, I probably should have by now, but it was the Global Shapers Gold Coast Hub. Mm -hmm. uh, you're also you're also mentoring on that. Is yes. That, yeah. Can you talk? What is that? Yeah. So the Global Shapers Gold Coast basically they're a community network of young people that drive dialogue, action, and change. Um, and really where, you know, they're trying to put a focus on saying young people are really central to the future of decision making. Um, so they bring together really, really passionate people from between, I believe it's 18 and 30. Um, but yeah, they bring together a group. Cohort is a strong supporter of that. I've mentored the group. Um, we actually have one of our team at Co-Spaces, Janine, who is a rising star in this space. Um, she's actually heading to Geneva, Switzerland next month to speak at the World Economic Forum um, and represent the Gold Coast. So oh, nice. um, it's, yeah, they're a really inspiring group of, uh, you know, young Gold Coasters who are trying to drive change and come together and just, you know, connect with a shared passion. So what's she speaking on? She's actually speaking on a initiative that they started called um, the Good Karma Project, where they collect, um, you know, they collect the profits from cans from recycling from different Gold Coast businesses. They put that money into a um, ecology camp that teaches young people about um, forest restoration on the Gold Coast. Um, it's really cool. I'm sure she can explain it a little bit better than I can, uh, but it's a really cool project that's happening on the Gold Coast. So it's awesome that that will be highlighted on the world stage. Oh, that that's incredible. So the Gold Coast over there highlighted. Perfect. Um, okay, so it's been really interesting to, speaking with you today. You're just an amazing person. You have boundless amount of energy. I'm tired of listening to you <laughs> for what you're doing, but I do want to ask you a question. Yes. I came here and studied and you haven't left and you've got your gorgeous little son now. And yes. Why the Gold Coast? What is so special about the Gold Coast? If someone's listening from any other place in Australia, what is it about the Gold Coast that you think is absolutely a, you know, a must, must go to destination? Oh, look, I mean, I could talk about all those, you know, all the cliche things about lifestyle and flexibility and the weather and um, but for me, Stell, I stayed because I got a job that I loved. Yes. Um, and that's what that's what tied me here, to be honest. And I think that's, you know, people leave because they they don't find jobs in the industry sectors they want. And that's why a lot of my friends I went to uni with left. But, you know, I was really lucky enough to to land in a job that I'm so passionate about, 
and that I really enjoy doing. We've got such a fantastic team at CoSpaces. My director, Ben, is amazing. Um, so, you know, that's that's what tied me here. I, I love the job. I love um, our team, you know, so I'm, I can't think of doing work anywhere else because of the work that we're doing here is so important and I'm so passionate about it. So um, I love the Gold Coast. It's always backed me. Um, <laughs> so, you know, that helps as well. Um, it's a big year for our city next year. We've got two elections, potentially, you know, potentially three if Albanese calls it early. Um, so it's going to be an interesting one, I think, in the next couple of years. It's full of campaigning and caretaker modes, but I think what will come out of that is we'll have a lot of people stand up and you know, put their great ideas forward for the Gold Coast. And that's always really exciting to watch. So I'm a bit of a political nerd, as you know, still, but I think if we can see, you know, we've got inspiring people who are going to stand up, we'll see where we land in the next year or so um, and how we can best move forward as a city. But lots and lots of capable people that work around here and an exciting professional workforce that I love being around. And the interesting point was, I think it was um, you were you were twenty years old when you were here, first came yeah. or something, finished um, uni. Um, the interesting part of that conversation is that a lot of your friends moved away from the Gold Coast to you mm-hmm. know, but now they don't have to because now we have um, we have these jobs which didn't exist even you know five years ago because we are just growing in these massive wonderful sectors. You know the med, med tech sector and the sectors you're talking about, biotech, sport tech. And we're, we're like, you can actually study here and get an amazing job here on the yeah. office, which 10 years ago, that really didn't exist too much. So we're really lucky, aren't we? We're so fortunate. We've got these incredible, you know, sectors that are growing. I think the like where we've got to in the last 10 years, I mean, the space that I work in now, which is an innovation space, it used to be an empty paddock where they held the big day out. So that's, you know, that was my 2013 standing there watching international acts. And and now I get to work there and and work with these incredible world world leading experts. So um, where we've come in the last 10 years is just, you know, incredible. So I think the next 10, yes. you know, I'm, I'm, I want to stick around and see where we get to. Yeah, definitely. Most definitely. Look, it's been wonderful chatting to you today. Um, and um, congratulations on your breaking the drought with being a president of the Central Chamber of Commerce. And thank you for all the work you do on the Gold Coast. Thanks, Del. Yeah, I'm, I am, um, you know, not sleeping as well as I, as I used to with the new I baby. Was but... ask that. I was going to ask, how's, well, probably my last question would have been, how's baby boy going? <laughs> Oh, he's he's awesome, but um, I'm I feel like I'm running on minimum sleep, maximum makeup. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah, it's part of the journey, you know. So there's it's yep. uh, it's an exciting one to be on. It certainly is. Well, all the best, and I look forward to catching up with you later on and hearing what's happening after um, in about eight months' time. <laughs> Love it. Thanks. See you later. Bye. Thanks for listening today. For a complete list of podcast episodes and transcripts, go to rdagoldcoast.org.au slash podcasts. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn or Twitter.